Um, here we are. Okay. All right. So, welcome to AP Racing. Um, thanks so much for uh, giving us the opportunity to impact your life uh, in a positive manner. Um, this is something that I've been kicking around for maybe eight years, um, contemplating doing in some way, shape, or form. And um, the current iteration, year one, is what we came up with. Hopefully, through progress and learning and um, experience, we will continue to add more features and access and um, experiences to you guys as we learn uh, where, what you guys want and what works best for us. So we do have a year one plan, year two, and year three. Um, so we are, um, this is definitely a learning process and um, as the first group of AP Racing um, clients, you will get, uh, you'll be on the journey with us from day one. So it's super exciting. Um, I'm going to go through some commonly asked questions, and uh, hopefully it'll it'll help you guys understand what we're trying to offer. So we do have three different levels of AP racing. It'll be the POTS heads, which is a club version, and then we will have uh, factory racing, which is semi-custom coaching, and then the highest level is one-on-one -on -one coaching. And we looked at a, uh, a lot of what's currently out there, and we thought, felt like we're going to offer something different and something new but also at the same time not try to reinvent the wheel. Um, so in terms of semi-custom racing because the bulk of the interest was in semi-custom racing, um, what is that, how does it work and can I explain it? So semi-custom racing is we will build out four to six week plans and um, you'll have your own Training Peaks account and you go in and you put in what days you're, um, the hours that you can train, as well as what your off days are and what your training days are, and we will uh, populate and, and create four to six week plans where it gives you a chance to adjust and adapt to the workload, and then we will adjust after that. If it's about two weeks, it's a little too short to adjust and adapt to workloads, and beyond six weeks, you start to get a little stale. So we felt like four to six weeks was the sweet spot to look at individual, uh, look at your individual plan, and um, make adjustments. Um, I think one of the biggest things that we're going to offer, and um, this is Mike's huge contribution to it, was the fact that we want to enable you to learn about yourself. And I've got my coach, Mike Dunn, sitting next to me right now. I'll turn the computer. There's Mike. Hi, everyone. Um, so what we do is um, Mike, Mike wanted to say, hey, I want to empower all of our clients to, um, to learn more about themselves as athletes and people and, and empower them so then they can go and make the right changes that we are prescribing to their uh, to their workouts. So what we're going to do is we're going to have some pre, pre prescribed work and um, it'll allow you to get a baseline and then we'll teach you how to read what your body is telling you and Mike can do a better job of explaining. What we're looking for from you over the first week or two is just to get some baseline information on who you are as an athlete and also get to know you, uh, what your life is like, your your daily uh, responsibilities beyond training and, and just package something for you that works for you. But as Andy was saying, learning how to read your own uh, and interpret your own data that you're getting back from your daily training and and how you can uh, how you can begin to formulate your own sort of your rhythm and pattern on how you go about things, and that that's what I've done with Andy over the years, and we're uh, we're excited to uh, convey that on to our athletes. So each each athlete will have their own Training Peaks account. Um, we'll set you up 
with one if you already have one then we'll grant you access to the AP Racing um, I guess the portal within Training Peaks so that you can um, so we can populate your workouts that you already if you already have an account um, within Training Peaks so we'll, we'll, we'll get access through that once you allow us access into your own Training Peaks account if you don't have one then we'll set up a tutorial with you and walk you through how to how to use Training Peaks uh, because that is going to be our mode of communication with um, delivering the workouts to you in a timely manner and making sure that you understand what's going on. I think one of the biggest things, uh, maybe it's a point of confusion or not, but with one-on-one -on -one coaching versus factory uh, semi-custom coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching will be more the coaching that I receive in terms of um, when Mike communicates with me, hey, these are the exact watts and this is the exact amount of time I want you to hold it and this is the exact cadence I need you to hold it at. Um, he, he really drills down for me what my watts are, my cadence is, um, my duration of exposure is um, on each different discipline, swimming, biking, and running. And that's what one-on-one -on -one coaching will provide. Uh, Semi-custom coaching will be uh, a target zone oriented um, where you need to do some baseline tests that we will prescribe to you so you can learn to read the information and then apply it to 80% of your threshold or whatever it is that we are trying to, to establish. Um, we'll communicate with you based off of your own, um, your own testing levels if that makes sense. Um, with regards to our merchandise, the team kit, and the access to my sponsors, that was one of the biggest things that we wanted to offer was access to the people and the companies that are invested in the sport, um, and, and we wanted to offer it to you at a, at a discount. So it's a huge it was a huge ask on, on my behalf, but um, we, we, we were able to pass on anywhere between 30% and 70%. It'll fall somewhere in there based off of the product and service that you're asking for or looking for and what you're going to get. So I think the team kit, based off of the numbers that we were able to crunch, were, was about 55% off, which is amazing. Um, so we are asking that all people um, race in team kit because it gives us exposure. It also gives us a chance for um, uh, a greater impact within the community and for uh, us to build excitement about, about the brand. Um, I did see a question on the side here. I'm going to tool around here and try to make it work. All right, so with the team right now, our core group of people are myself, Mike Doan is our head coach, and Daniel Brianza is our uh, team manager, So, and, and, as well as a coach. So um, that's the team right now, and as far as we, what we're going to work on is teaching you to learn about your heart and your body. Um, we are going to tackle all aspects of racing, and that that stems from you know teaching you about swimming, biking, running. We want to be a learning center, um, and also included in that is some nutrition. Um, so we will hit on uh, how to, how to manage your nutrition in training as well as in racing as well. So it is definitely any experience that I've had any learning that I've had and experienced, uh, I'm more than happy to share and willing to share. And um, hopefully that'll make you a, um, a better athlete. So, um, Mike, did you want to add something? Regarding nutrition? No, just regarding the team yeah. and what we're offering. A lot of people want to know what's, what's different about what you guys do. And, I don't know if it's if 
if we do anything different, I think it's just the way that we look at uh, how we look at Andy's response to training and how I use his response to help me keep programming his training. I, I don't have a 12-week uh, block set up for Andy with this is what we're doing this week and, 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 and so on. It's uh, we, we know what the big picture is and for the most part we go a day at a time or even a week at a time with uh, volumes, um, how, how much time we're going to spend in various training zones, uh, how much time at certain wattages, etc. And the, the important thing is feedback, um, both be, between Andy and myself and, and with the athlete, with Andy, his, his own feedback inside of himself. How am, I, how am I responding to the workload? Am I overworking? Am I not working hard enough? Am I seeing positive changes? Am I adapting? And when I do adapt, what am I doing after I've adapted to a particular workload? And I think that's the key to any uh, endurance sport is to know when your body is adapting and what to do at that point. And in all of our, our race, our training blocks are built around three or four key races a year. And, and there might be, uh, you know, like Andy's first race is Oceanside, so that's a huge lead up to that. But then once the race season starts, there might be three, four weeks between races. And it's how, how do we handle the time in between races, keeping uh, sharp to race, but at the same time keep the workload where it needs to be going forward. And the big picture is right now, and has been for a few years, Kona. So that's how we look at it. We'll ask you to give us your key races you want to focus on. Or your objectives, and then we'll build around that. All right, awesome. Andy Daniel here for. Uh, let me jump in a quick second. You, uh, Doug, good question. When will the team kits be available for purchase? Well, um, we're looking to place an order within the next two weeks, and it's usually about four to six um, weeks from then that you'll get them. Ideally, you know, Andy needs his kit for Oceanside, which is the beginning of April, and we'd like everyone else to have their kits by then as well. Um, at that point, we'll also have spares throughout the year for people to purchase, and we'll do team orders as well. All right. And we also had a question um, about team camps. Is there going to be an opportunity to do a team camp? Uh, right now we're looking into it. We want to gauge the interest, um, but it, it could be that it is in year two um, when we have uh, a little bit more time to set up. Right now our priorities are um, – building workouts, uh, communicating with you guys, and making sure that we all are uh, using the same vocabulary when we talk about our, our efforts um, and the percentage of efforts that we're using and um, how to rest properly, how to recover properly, and how to use the, the, the right m amount of effort in training. Um, I have a question here that says, uh, um, I, I'm a busy student. Are there any student discounts? Well, right now, what we decided to do is instead of uh, parceling out discounts to military or students or AARP members or AAA members, what we did is we said, okay, how what what's the best service that we can offer and at the right price? Um, so we have no discounts at this moment, um, and we probably won't moving forward. Uh, what we do have is. Um, the, the best product that we can give you at the at the cheapest price we can offer it at um, that's what we that's what we initially showed up with and that's what we're offering so everybody gets the the same great discounts um, based off of the team that you're in whether it's the Potza club the factory racing or the one-on-one -on -one coaching and as you move up or change your level then um, some of the discounts increase as well so if you want a bigger discount, maybe you should sign up for factory racing. Um, all right, I'm going through some questions here. Let's see here. Dan, do you have any uh, questions that you need to answer? 
These are all the questions that we kind of pre-populated. Um, in terms of access to me, uh, it is called AP Racing. Uh, those are my initials, so it is my team. But um, Daniel and Mike are huge part of the, the process and, and the team. Um, we've basically parceled out the workload into thirds and the access right now. So if you are, depending on the level of your coach, um, I'm always going to be on the Hangouts. Um, I will be reviewing coaching plans. Um, I don't know how much communication, like direct communication with each athlete that I will have. Um, but I, I will I will meet everybody eventually. Um, and, and I will be part of your journey as athletes. And um, I, but at the same time, my number one job is training and competing. Um, so that is still my priority in in life right now is, is racing to the best of my ability. So with that being said, it is going to limit some of your access to me. Um, but Mike and Daniel will always be there. And, and I'll be in the background. You may not just hear from me on um, a daily basis, but you, you're definitely here from me. And, and my impact is in, in the team and how we're organizing it. Any questions in there that you want to see or answer? Daniel, did you have anything you wanted to input here? Oh, I just wanted to make another note, guys. For Training Peaks, once you register, we, we're looking to um, send out an invitation to you guys by the end of the week, um, which will hook up your account with our team account. I believe Andy mentioned that, but just wanted to make sure you understood that. Um, and you'll probably get some other information as well. Once you sign up, we'll also send out a team handbook um, as well as other information to get you started on, on your way with, with us and the team. Uh, Andy also mentioned about team camp. Like we said, it's one of those things might be hard to do in year one, but we're still looking into it. So, um, you know, we'll let you know the market calendars. All right. Um, uh, some some other questions have been coming in. One is, um, are all athlete workouts on the team the same? Uh, the answer is yes and no uh, at the same time. the um, We are going to look at your values and, and what you're offering, but when we terms of uh, baseline testing, that's when we really figure out how that works. And I think that maybe I'll have a little interview here with Mike to kind of um, – suss out some of your questions if that works for you. So, um, Mike. Oh, here we go. So, Mike, are all the workouts on the team, on the factory team, are they going to be the same? Um, and, and how do you differentiate between, uh, you know, a, a, a nine-hour Ironman athlete and a, and a 15 mile or hour Ironman athlete? I think the premise is the same okay. uh, for, for all endurance athletes, at least in our, uh, how we look at it. But you're all different in terms of you know, how much time you can put into it, your, your training zones, your, your unique physiology. Um, so that's all part of the first few weeks is getting to know exactly – uh, for each one of you, what's what's the best programming for you? Are you a person who runs with a high, who carries a high heart rate, or are you a low heart rate person like Andy, and so on? And so again, we're all about um, using your heart rate response to help guide where you're going and what you're doing. Will you offer? Um, how do I test? What my heart rate does my heart rate change for swimming versus biking versus running will it be different or is it kind of the same? There's probably a, a ten point difference. You know, we'll use you as an example. You, you're uh, when you're hitting it hard with your swimming and you're doing some long, you know, six hundred meter reps or you know four four hundreds and so on. You normally are in the uh, 145 to 150 range when you're when you're and but that's not terribly uncomfortable for you when you're running at 150 you are running fast and hard so there is a difference between the, you know the 
the uh, response you get from the impact of running compared to cycling and swimming. But we will address that and, and help you identify the, uh, the correct zones to get the most out of what you're doing. Uh, it's, it's not rocket science by any means, but it is, we, we do try to be precise and over time with what we're, what we're either prescribing or what you're going to learn to, to do for yourself. One, one other example is with heart rate training, we've learned over time that, for, for example, with Andy, his, his goal during most of his, say, his Ironman races that he does twice or two times a year, if he's able to average, say, 145 for the, for the entirety of the race, that, that gives me great information on how to train Andy in terms of how much time do we spend at 145 or 150 or, or lower. And, and we've learned that the bulk of his training is below that threshold line. And if you rest properly and prepare for your races, all of that will come back out of you on race day. So, you know, little things like that, but you're all different. And, and that's what we're, one of, one of my jobs is to help you identify what are the sweet spots in your training. Okay. And, I, and, I, I, and I'm available, and that's, that's my job. Mike, can you, Andy, Mike, can you explain a little bit about, like, how you do your heart rate? Like, for Andy, you're talking about his race efforts. For most of these athletes, you'll look at race efforts, or you look more at um, what will be based on that, or max heart rate, or some other method? I, I personally like getting race information, which means you have to wear a heart rate monitor when you race. At least that's what we do. And, and around with that information, I can build your programming. I don't believe in uh, the, the conventional max heart rate, you know, to go as hard as you can for a minute or 90 seconds, crank your heart rate up as high as you can, and then subtract that from your age, and that's your training baseline. I, I look at race effort. What can you, I, you know, what, what can you theoretically sustain over a four or five hour race, for example? That, that gives me the insight to help build your program. So leading off of that, in lieu of, if you don't have race data, just as a starting off, right. jumping off point, um, do you have in mind what you'd like to see from each right. of our athletes within the first couple weeks so you can start to dial in to their physiology and their and build a specific program uh, for them? We do. We're, we're going to give you some real simple field tests to do, and, and we'll, we'll ask all of you to do it. Even, even if you're in great shape and, and you have a, a lot of, for example, race data or training data, uh, which I'd like to see, but at the same time, I want to get some right now real-time data on you in terms of these little field tests. For example, uh, in swimming, we'll have you do... Uh, we're, we're still working this out, but for, as an example, do an 800-yard swim or meters and at perceived, um, you know, 70 or 75 percent effort and then get some heart rate data and pace data. And that, that gives me a great window to look into, like, who you are. And then on a different day, we'll have you do eight 100s with X amount of rest, again, getting pace data and, and heart rate data. And that, again, I get to know you a little bit better that way. Uh, cycling, we'll do some time and power. Uh, uh, you know, look at the data that way. Running pace and heart rate. So, yeah, we'll, we'll have some real simple tests that you can just jump into the first couple of weeks. I have a question for you, Mike. Um... Is there a minimum amount of hours that you're going to ask each athlete to devote to training? Yeah, I again, you all have lives and um, and, and lots of demands, but I, 
I, I would hope that you could all put in at least eight to ten hours a week, which if you're a triathlete, that's uh, not going to be hard to do because you're all uh, somewhat crazy and you'll make it work. Um, and, and beyond, like you're putting in 30 plus hours a week when you add up everything you do. Oh yeah, it's a, it's a full-time job. So, it's 40. So, you know, I, I can see many of you, even though you're you're working full time and you have lives and families, you know, 15, 20 hour weeks is not at all unrealistic for you, and, and maybe more. It, it all depends on the time you have and uh, what your what your goals are. Okay, I think that succinctly succinctly uh, sums up the the type of uh, training that we're going to be doing. All right. So that leads me into the next um, question is, so now that we've attacked the heart and the body, um, what are we expecting from you as an athlete uh, on AP Racing? Um, the, these, this is, uh, when you sign up, you will get a handbook. It will explain things nicely. Um, it will explain our philosophy, um, what we're really hoping to impart knowledge-wise, um, as well as just kind of some general parameters. But um, in terms of what we're asking for you from the team aspect is uh, we are looking for uh, leaders in the community. We are looking for people who um, are looking to improve their lives. I think that would be the number one thing that we're looking for is um, – Someone who is willing to uh, to explore their options um, and their potential, uh, both mentally and physically. Um, I know you'll be tested emotionally along the way as well, but you have to have come into it with an open mind um, because if you are searching for improvement, we will uh, provide a path for you. And I think that's probably the biggest thing that we are looking for is someone who's looking for improvement in their lives um, as triathletes. So um, if it's just uh, a single sport that where you need improvement, um, triathlon, swimming, biking, running, um, as we progress, hopefully we're going to offer some strength components, uh, a nutrition component. Um, it'll be it'll be the whole package. That uh, obviously each race. Um, we'll have different demands, and we'll, we'll hopefully prepare you uh, like you've never been prepared before. Um, so, yeah, the, the, those are the questions. I think we've kind of summed it up right there. Uh, I hope that this, this was informational um, and helpful for you guys. Um, welcome to the team. Uh, I'm excited to, to meet each and every one of you if we haven't met before. And um, I wish you guys the best this year. And uh, we will be able to stay in touch um, all year long. And hopefully this will be the best year ever. All right. I'm signing off. There's Mike. Thanks, guys. And uh, we'll be in touch. Okay.